But, uh, hello everybody, welcome back to our two-dimensional physics engine programming. Here we're programming a two-dimensional physics engine from scratch. Um, if you'd like any of the source code, I'm going to have links in the description below. So for this video, I'm just going to go through a to-do list that I created. And it just has a lot of little things, a lot of little changes that I wanted to get worked out. Before I moved on to mathematically changing the physics engine and adding things like rotation and uh, getting more complex in that regard. I'd also like to really separate the broad phase from the um, narrow phase of the collision detection and collision resolution. Uh, right now, the broad phase is still kind of intermingled with the narrow phase. We're still doing a little bit of collision resolution inside the broad phase. So I want to separate it so there's a complete broad phase, which all it does is find two pairs that are possibly intersecting and save a reference to those two pairs, and then send that information to the narrow phase where I can actually resolve the collision. All right, so I'm going to close this out. Here's my to-do list, and I've kind of separated it by the different file locations. So we have the flat body. Let's go ahead and start there. These are, again, these are just a lot of little things that I want to change. So I have the rotation field. I want to change the name of that. So instead of rotation, we're going to call this the angle. And then down here, I have the rotational velocity. I want to change that to the angular velocity. All right, so we can get rid of those first two items in our list. So next in our flat body, I want to group the physics data together. So a lot of these read-only fields, I want to put all in one location here. So here's all of our read-only data. This is data that defines this body uh, physically. So I'm going to go ahead and just group this information together. And the shape type I want to group up here as well. In fact, I'm, I'm going to put the shape type here at the top. Okay, so now at the very top we have um, the private fields that define what the body is doing. Uh, then we have these read-only public fields that define what the shape actually looks like and gives it all the physical properties we need. Um, okay, and I like the way that looks a lot better. I can get rid of this item now. Okay, remove position from the flat body constructor uh, to a move to function. Okay, so down here in the constructor, we were assigning position inside the flat body constructor. And I don't actually want to do that. Inside the constructor, I just want to assign values. And you can see here, I need to change this rotation to angle and then angular velocity. And actually, let me go through and change all of those. Okay, it looks like I've renamed all of the rotations to now angles, and I think I need to change the property as well. So I'm going to scroll to the top here. Oh, and I don't have a property for that yet. Okay, and that's fine. We don't need to have a property for that. So we just have the position and the linear velocity that we're passing out. Okay, so let's get back to this position. So the flat body constructor, I want this to I want the flat body constructor to strictly define the properties of this body and of this shape. So I'm going to get rid of the position definition here. I'll drop that out. Uh, so position I'll just set to a flat vector zero. Okay, and then same thing down here inside of our, see we're down here inside of our uh, create circle body and our create box body helper functions. Uh, so we're not gonna actually send in position right here. So we're gonna get rid of these uh, position fields and we're just gonna strictly define the object itself, not where it exists, but just define what it looks like. Uh, physically. All right, so drop that out of the circle body. All right, let's scroll down here. We're going to take it out of the constructor as well. Okay, same thing for create box body. We're going to take out the position field. And then inside, uh, down here, we define the constructor. Let's take out position as well. So now, defining position is not the function of the create box body. Okay, when we create it, we just want to define what it looks like and the physical properties. We don't want to define how fast it's moving or its position or anything like that. We'll do that later. So now instead of finding position here, I'm going to make a separate function called move to. Oh, no, actually, we have that function already. So we're just going to use the move to function here whenever we want to move a body directly to a place. Okay, and so we have a move and a move to, which allows us to manually move the bodies um, outside of the physics simulation. And we have a rotate function as well, and I think I want to specify a rotate two, which allows us to actually rotate it to a specific angle. 
if we call this function, we're just going to set the angle. And then we also need to tell it that the transform updates required and the axis line bounding box update is required as well. Okay, that looks good. That item is now removed. Let's drop that out. Uh, group all the read-only fields together in the class definition. Okay, and I think that's something I did. So maybe I put that in there twice. But yeah, up here at the top, I've already grouped all the read-only fields together. So we're good there. I'll drop that one out of there. Okay, calculate inertia in the circle, create circle body and create box body. And so that's something I was talking about a little bit. But inside of this constructor, I just want to set the values. I don't want to do, I don't really want to do any calculations. All the calculations I want to handle inside the create circle body and the create box body functions. So right here, I created the rotational inertia for this body, but I don't want to handle that here. I actually want to pass this in as a field. Once we're passing in the mass, I'm going to pass in the inertia right here. Okay, so that's going to be another field that we're going to pass in. And instead of calling this function, we're just going to set the inertia. Okay, and I'm going to start putting these things together. Okay, and then same thing right here. Depending on the shape type, I'm either setting the vertices using these functions or I'm setting them to null if it's a circle shape. So I think I want to move that out of here and, and just pass these in as values. And in fact, the triangles right now, I'm not sure if I actually want to pass the triangles in right here or if I actually even need that. Let me uh, get rid of the triangles right now. Let's see if that's something we don't even need right now. Okay, so we're creating the triangles. So scrolling down here, I'm in the create circle body. It wants us to pass in the inertia here. So here's where we're actually going to calculate the inertia. And it seems more logical here now that I'm reorganizing this code. So we're creating a circle body. Let's just calculate the inertia for a circle right here instead of having a separate function to do that. I'm going to go up here to our calculate inertia function. So I'm going to cut this out of here. Or actually, I'm going to cut out the cut out the formulas here and just grab these formulas. So here's the inertia for a circle. Let's cut that out. I'm going to bring that down to our create circle body. Okay, and right after the mass, let's calculate the inertia. And I'll paste that right in there. Okay, and this seems like a more logical thing to do anyways. We're already in a function that's creating a circle body. Let's just give it the function for the inertia for a circle. And so this will be the mass here and the radius. Okay, and then it wants us to pass in this inertia to the constructor. So right after the mass, that's where we put the inertia. So let's pass the inertia in. Okay, so that cleans that up. That one has no errors now. Now we need to get the inertia for the box body. So here's create box body. We're going to scroll down here and calculate the inertia in this function as well. And then, uh, so let's get the formula for that. So if I scroll up here, Here's our calculate rotational inertia function. I'm going to grab this uh, equation right here for calculating the inertia of a box body or a rectangle. And then I can actually get rid of this calculate inertia function. We're not going to use that anymore. So that cleans up that code quite a bit. Uh, let's go down to our create box body. And when we're calculating the inertia, I'm just going to paste this formula right in here. And then inside the constructor, this is where we create the flat body. Let's pass in the new inertia. This needs to be the local mass that we created right here, or we calculated. And the width and the height will just be local values that we have in this function as well. And looking at this, this is a much better place to do this inertia calculation. And I like the idea of, of the flat body constructor just doing assignment. It's just recording the values. It's not doing any calculations. All of the calculations are going to be done inside the create functions. All right, so let's scroll up here. So I took out the triangles, and I'm not sure if we actually need the triangles or not. In fact, let's see. I've, I've taken out the triangles. Let's see um, if we get any errors from that. Okay, it looks like the triangles are completely unnecessary right now. So I'm going to get rid of the triangles arrays, and we're not going to use those at all. Okay, and then finally this last public field for the triangles array. All right, so we've calculated the inertia in the create circle body and create box body functions. I can get rid of that. And as a byproduct here, we've also removed the calculate rotational inertia function from the flat body class. 
So we are all done with that. OK, that looks really good. We've been able to simplify our code a, uh, quite a bit here. Get rid of some functions we're not using and some fields that we're not using. Um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So right here, we're determining if the body is static and then determining the inverse mass based on whether it's static or not. And this is actually one calculation that I would like to do right here inside the constructor. So we're, we're just going to calculate the inverse mass here. It's, there's really no reason for me to, to move this outside. Once we have the inertia, that's all we're going to need. And then we can just calculate the inverse once we're here. But I would like to move this up in here into this line where we're calculating the mass and the inertia. In fact, let me move the inertia up here next to the mass. Those two are very intertwined, so I want to keep them together as far as where they are inside the class or where they're located um, in my code. All right, and what I'd like to do here is now go back to our create body function. So we have the create circle body. I'm going to set the initial values for our mass and our inertia to zero. And what we're doing here is we're assuming that these, uh, these bodies are going to be static. And if they're static, we want the mass and the inertia to be zero. What I'm gonna do here is just do a test and say, if it's not static, then let's go ahead and calculate the actual inertia here. OK, so by default, the mass and inertia are going to be 0. And if it's not static, then let's go ahead and actually calculate the inertia here as well. Let's do the same thing for the, for the create box body. So the initial value will be 0 for the mass and the inertia. We'll just do a quick check to see if it is static or not. So if it's not static, we will do the calculation. All right, and now what this allows me to do is the default value that's going to come into the constructor is either going to be is going to be zero if it's if it is static, or if it's not static, we're going to have an actual value here. And so I'm going to go up to the top. Here's our constructor. So I want to get rid of this if else statement and just move it up to these lines up here. Um, where and I'm going to calculate the inverse mass and inertia right here. So Let's put the inverse mass calculation right here, and then the inverse inertia calculation right here. If the mass is greater than zero, that means this is not a static body, and I need to calculate the inverse mass. And the way we do that on this one line is I can do a one line query here inside of C sharp. If the mass is greater than zero, then let's do the calculation. So the question mark means that if this is true, we're going to follow this path. And that means we're going to do this inverse mass calculation. So I'll put that right there. And then I put a colon. And what that means is if this is not true, then we follow this path over here. And we're just going to use 0 for the inverse mass. What I'm doing is just taking all of these lines here and compressing it into this line and then this line here. Let's do the same thing for the inverse inertia as well. So if the inertia passed in is greater than zero, then we're going to calculate the inverse inertia. And actually, I'll just use inertia here. And I'll do the same thing for the mass, actually. Let's change this to just the mass that we passed in, since we're uh, using the value here. OK, so this is the case if the inertia is greater than zero. Oh, and I don't need a question mark there. OK, so if the inertia is greater than zero, then we're going to calculate the inertia. Otherwise, we're just going to set it to zero. Okay, So I can get rid of that, and that'll simplify that code quite a bit. All right, so now we have the vertices and the transform vertices. Uh, this is something I want to do inside the create body functions and pass it in as a field. So let's just pass it in up here right after the width and the height. Um, let's pass in the vertices. Uh, so then right here, what I can do is just assign the vertices, and everything else should remain the same. In fact, I'm going to keep this if statement. So if it's not a box body, I still want to set everything to null, just like that. And then the transform update required and AAB update required is going to be the same. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the actual uh, create body functions and let's set up the vertices. So if it's a circle body, we're just going to pass in null for the vertices. So here's our flat body constructor. Let's just scroll over here and we're going to pass in null because this will not have any vertices because it's a circle. And then inside of our create box body, let's go ahead and create the vertices. So just right here, I'm going to create the vertices, give it the width and the height. 
And I can pass in these vertices to the constructor. So here's the actual constructor of the flat body, and that'll be right after the width and the height. We're going to pass in the vertices. All right, so that looks good. That looks like everything we need to do for our flat body. Let's move on to the collisions class. This one should be fairly simple. So in here, I had the find contact points functions, and I wanted to change the name a little bit. So we have this find contact points function, and this is the generic one. This is the one that will determine what type the bodies are, and then it will call the appropriate find contact points function for that uh, for that for those two types of bodies. In this case, I kind of called everything find contact points. So find contact points, find contact points, find contact point, find contact point. And I want to be a little bit more descriptive in this. Instead of find contact points, so this is a box in a box. I want to call this one find polygon contact points. So let's go ahead and go down to where this one is. So here's the find polygon contact points, which I called find contact points. And so let's just call this find polygon polygon contact points. And what I can do is, since I renamed it here in the definition, I can just click over here, and I'm just going to rename it for, uh, for everything it can find. So that should rename it everywhere. Here's the find contact point, and this is for a circle and a polygon. And so I want to rename this to find circle polygon contact point. Again, let's rename it for everything in the project. All right, and then we have the find contact point, and this one's for a circle to a circle. So I'm going to call this find circles contact point. And let's just rename that again as well. And actually, now that I look at this, I call this uh, find circles contact point. I kind of like that naming convention. So instead of find polygon polygon contact point, I'm going to call this find polygons contact points like that. Okay. Okay, I like that a lot better. And if we go up to our main font, find contact points function, Okay, so now everything should be well-defined. So we have the polygons contact points, we have the circle polygon contact points, and then we have a circles contact points. All right, so that's it for that item. Let's go ahead and drop that out of our list. All right, next inside of our flat math library, we have the nearly equal for two vectors. And what I wanted to do was, instead of comparing the components of these two vectors, I want to compare how far apart they are. So I want to get a distance between them. And if that distance is less than uh, the very small amount that we defined earlier, then we will consider them equal. So let's go to our flat math library. I'm going to scroll down here to the nearly equal function. Let's get the distance between them. And I'm going to use the distance squared. So our math library should have a distance squared function. We're going to get the distance between A and B. And if that distance is less than the very small amount, then we're going to consider them close enough to being equal. But since we're using the distance squared, we have to use a very small amount squared. Relatively simple change there. I just wanted to use a distance instead of comparing the individual components. All right, so let's drop that out of our list and let's move on. So inside the game one class now, uh, a lot of little things here as well. So let's go ahead and save our project. Let's go to the game one class. And you can see there's lots of changes in here that we need to make because we've changed things inside of our body. In fact, we can do that right now. So we're no longer able to define the position inside these create box body and create circle body functions. So here's where we define the position. I'm going to go ahead and grab that out. Just cut that out of there. What I'm going to do is just set it directly using the move to function. And I need to do that for all of the bodies in here. So there's our original ground body. I need to do that same thing here for the uh, one of the ledge bodies here. So let's take that out. Let's move that to the position there. And then same thing for ledge body two. Let's move out the position. Okay, that should take care of that. Let's find the other instances we need to create or change. Okay, so we have our create box body here. Um, we're putting the mouse world position in there. So we're gonna cut that out um, because we're setting the, the position based on where the mouse is clicking. And down here, the body is actually going to move to that position there. Uh, same thing for the circle body. OK, and it looks like we have one more instance down here at the bottom. So here's where we're drawing. OK, so we're actually drawing the boxes using polygons. And that's why we had the triangles. And I'm not actually going to do that anymore. We're going to use the box. We're actually going to use a box drawing function inside of our uh, shapes routine. So instead of drawing a polygon, which requires triangles, let's draw a box fill. 
Um, so now here, all we have to do is pass in the dimensions of the box. So the center is going to be the position of the body. So we just get the body position. And then all we need are the body width, the body height. And then finally the color, so I can get rid of uh, all of this code and just leave the color in there at the end as well. Oh, and I need to, uh, instead of using the body position, I need to use the position that's been converted um, from a flat vector to a vector two, and that's just position. Okay, and now since we're using this function, I don't need to get an array here of transform vertices for the polygon. So I can just drop that out right there. And then let's do a draw box to get the outline as well. And we're just doing white outlines for all of our shapes. So we're going to draw a box. And uh, actually, now that we're doing this, I don't need the vertex buffer information either. Let's go ahead and set this up and see if that gets rid of all of that code as well. Okay, so let's just give it the position, the width, and the height. And then the outline colors. Now the outline colors, now that I'm looking at this, this is something we can clean up as well. I don't need the outline colors. In fact, I think that's on my to-do list over here. Yeah, here's the remove outline colors array. And we're just going to use white for everything. So I'm going to get rid of the outline colors and we're just going to pass in white. In fact, let's go to the top and get rid of that array completely. So at the top, here's our game class. We're going to get rid of the outline colors array. And then I can just go through and delete all of that code. Quickly, I can just drop it all out. We don't need the outline colors at all. Okay, and here are the outline colors. This is just going to be white. Here's where we're drawing the circle. Let's give it a white color for the outline. Okay, so we've removed all of the outline colors. And uh, actually, I'm going to let's see what kind of errors we're getting now. So we have no errors. If we run this, it should look exactly the same as we did before. Let's just make sure there's nothing happening. Oh, okay, except for it's trying, it's not rotating the boxes. Okay, so I actually need to pass in some kind of rotation for the draw command. So we're drawing the boxes, but we're not actually drawing the rotation. So let's get that information in here right now. So we need to give it rotation right here. So we're just from the body, we're going to get the angle. Oh, and I don't have access to that either. So let's go back to the flat body. And we're going to make a property here at the top that allows us to get the angle information. All right, so now we should be able to get the angle. Let's go back to our game class, and we're just going to give it the angle so it knows how to rotate this box body. And then same thing for the draw box here. Let's give it the angle. I think there's an overloaded function for that. And actually, I don't have an overloaded function for that one. So I'm going to have to change that as well. Let's quickly go back to our shapes class. Okay, so here's where we're drawing. We don't actually have one that allows us to rotate a box. And so I'm going to have to create this really quick here and add to the flat library so we have the ability to do that. So let's make another function here. I'm going to call it draw box. We're going to give it a center, give it a width and a height. And we also want an angle of rotation and then finally a color. Okay, so now that we have this, I've kind of just written up the code here really quick. So I'm going to paste it in. Here's the code that does all of the uh, rotational information for the box. Uh, basically, this will get us up and running really quickly so we can rotate a box about a certain center. Okay, so let's go back to the game class. We can save all of this. Now we can pass in an angle of rotation. Let's go ahead and run that. So now everything should look exactly like we left it off. Oh, and I thought it corrected this, but this should be a lowercase angle. So here's the private field that we want to give access through this property. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run that and make sure everything works correctly. Okay, so everything looks exactly the same as it did before. All right, so that's as far as I want to get with my to-do list on this video. I'm going to make another one where we're going to go through the rest of this information, uh, or at least most of it. Uh, we do have some entity creation stuff that I'd like to get into, but I think that'll have to happen in its own video. And then we have some world stuff that I'd like to work on as well. But for now, that looks good. Let's go ahead and leave it there, and then I'll make another supplemental video where I'll go through the rest of this to-do list.